Hey, this is Dustin with LT Transmission How To. Today I got a 97 Chevrolet here. I'm going to show you how to pull the transmission out of it. I've done this a few times, so I'll, uh, I'll try to give you an easier way to do it if you're trying to do it. Try to give you some tips and tricks and uh, try to tell you a little bit about it. We'll do some more videos later on tearing it down and uh, rebuilding it. But right now we'll just uh, go over pulling the transmission out. First thing on these, on the four-wheel drive Chevrolets, everything from uh, the early ones, early 90s, till 98, 99. The main thing I'd check for if you're losing fluid in your transmission, you don't know where it's going, you don't have no leaks on the ground, look in your transfer case. They have a double seal in the transfer case, and it, uh, it's bad about letting the fluid, it'll dry out and crack, let the fluid leak from the transmission into the transfer case, and then the other side of the seal won't let it go back into the transmission. What that's going to do is going to run your transmission low and it's probably going to burn your third fourth your clutches up. This one here, it has nothing but low and reverse and it's slipping real bad and low and reverse. Uh, we'll tear it down later and we'll find out what we got going on with that one. But uh, right now we're going to we're gonna go over. I have not pulled the pan off yet. I've not done anything. I've raised the truck up. It's set in here overnight and it's leaking from the, I believe from the front seal. I didn't look at it real good yet. But we are going to get started. So first thing I'm going to pull the, I'm going to pull the field plug out of the transfer case uh, and we'll just see if it's got too much fluid in it or not. If it has too much fluid in it, we'll know that seal's bad. But when we get the transfer case out, we can look at the seal and we can tell if it's bad or not. Uh, it would bad cracks and everything. So right now this is a 30 millimeter socket. I'm taking this field hole out or field plug out. And if it's got a bunch in there, it's going to, it's going to shoot out pretty good. So we'll, We'll know here in just a sec. And it doesn't. So let's see it was not bad. Or if it is, it's just might be leaking out of there too. It's like it's leaking better everywhere on this truck. These are uh, these are good trucks, but there's a few things bad wrong with them that that's fixable. Let me tighten this back up so I don't forget. And then when we put it back in, we'll we'll check, make sure it's full of fluid. First thing I like to do, I know the transmission has to come out because of the, uh, the problems it has. I've not pulled the pan off yet, but we will look at that in a minute. But to keep the fluid from going everywhere, because I like to control my fluid and not, not make a mess, or try to most of the time, I'm going to go ahead and get the cross member out of the way. That way, when I pull the pan, the cross member isn't it catching any of the fluid and running everywhere. So first, I'm going to take a mount bolt out. There are 15 millimeters. There's a washer with them. I always like to set my, that's extra somewhere. I always like to set my, my bolts and parts out nice and neat. It makes it a whole lot easier to find them when you get ready to put them back in. If you set them up nice and neat and know where they are and know what they go to, it's a whole lot easier. Next we'll have our, uh, our actual cross member bolts. They are 18 millimeter bolt head and 18 millimeter uh, nut. They have a spacer on them. I just like to put my nuts back on the uh, back on the boat and lay them up there on the arm, lay them on the floor. And usually, when you drop a bolt and you have a bucket nearby, that's where the boat goes. So there we go. We got that one back. Got two more on this side over here. Not losing. I've done this on camera before. Alright. This here you have wire harness going around the uh, around the cross member. Just get your little pick. Open the brackets up whole bit. And there actually is a a steel bracket over here with a bolt holding it down to the cross member, but it's somebody's done pried it up off there, so it's not holding it. So we're not going to take it off. Give me a stand here. I'll put it under my transfer case right now, and 
I will pick it up to where the uh, the studs from the transmission mount are clear of the uh, cross member. Slide my cross member out. There we go. You have to kind of turn that, get it to slide right out. Alright, next thing you know, we got these here. I'll probably go ahead and take my mount off. It is a 15 millimeter bolts, two 15 millimeter bolts for that. Oh, is that good? I'll take my mount, I'll put my bolts back in the holes, and I'll lay them over to the side. Alright, next, go ahead and take this uh, shifter cable off. Just Kind of pop it off easy. You should have a little clip up here. Come here. My thumb plug it. Come here. I've seen a lot of these come in here that are broke. There it goes. I've seen a lot of these come in here. They have this uh, this little C clip here. You pry it out if you look. See it? I'll lay it up there. And these two clips right here, I've seen a lot of them broke, and that's gonna, if you try to put your transmission back in with that broke, it's not gonna hold it in the right gear. If, uh, if you try to rig it up, I've seen a lot of them rigged up, they're not gonna, they're not gonna hold like you're supposed to in the right gear, and your transmission might be trying to be in two different gears at the same time. That's gonna cause problems, never gonna be a good thing. So we gotta get these, uh, push these clips in the right way. Try not to just break them out. If you do have to break one, you can get a new new shifter cable from the parts house. I would uh, highly recommend doing that if you have one broke because it will damage your transmission. All right, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and pull my pan. And we'll look at it and see what kind of damage we've got. I have, a, I have a good feeling we're gonna have quite a bit of metal on this one. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that. They are 16, uh, 16, 13 millimeter bow heads. We got 16 different ones. Over here I have a, uh, a heat shield. I'm just gonna bend it over because it's, it's not the easiest to get to with the exhaust right there. I'm just gonna bend it over. We can bend it back when I get when we go back in with it. Here are my 13 millimeter. Try not to splash my Beautiful camera woman over here. I'm gonna start with the back over here. Get these out. Drop them over here. Break the uh, break the seal on the uh, pan so it don't splash you real bad when it comes down because it's easier to break it loose now than break it loose with no bolts in it. And there we go. Got it broke loose. The clue's already dark. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this last bolt out. <laughs> Got quite a bit of metal in the pan. That is, uh, that's not good. It's not good for, uh, well, it's good for me. It's not good for you if this is your truck. Uh, sometimes you'll get one that you've changed the fluid in before. Somebody might have just changed the fluid in it and they're still having problems. And uh, sometimes you have to look and think, well, I've got nothing in the pan. But if you look at the top of the filter, that's where it's going to set first. 
So if you grab a little bit, you'll have a you'll have a bunch of metal. If you see all the sparkling sparkling fluid there, sparkling fluid's high dollar fluid. That costs a lot of money. You see it on there. All right. So what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this pan back on and go ahead and get ready to start pulling it out. Dry it off so I ain't have it gripping on my head the whole time. So that bothers me. Now when I put this back on, I'm just gonna put a couple bolts in there. Just to keep it on, keep it in place. Shouldn't have much uh, much fluid dripping out now. There we go. And I will wipe off the bottom of the paint because I don't like fluid dripping on me. But I like working on cars, been in the snow, which is gonna grip on you the whole day. It ain't fun. Let me tighten these up here. Watch the bottom of the thing off. Watch so. Did that way? All right. We have the uh, the pan, it's green. The cross member out. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and take my drive, my front drive shaft out right now. Just a second on the back end. Just because of where I have my light placed up here. There are 17 uh, 7 sixteenths. You got four 7 sixteenths bolts on the back and four on the front. I like to lay them together. You got a little strap here. like the back, same size, same strap. Lay them all up there together. Get your drive bar and get down. I'm going to break it loose from the transfer case. I'll pull from the front different. Way. There you go. Got your drive shaft out. Lay it off to the side. All right, on these, uh, this year model here, they have the, uh, the exhaust runs right underneath the uh, Torfenberger uh, dust cover. We, uh, it's a whole lot easier if you can, if this wasn't here, the dust cover would fall down out, out of the way. But with it being here, it's probably not gonna fall down. Sometimes I've taken out the, uh, the exhaust nuts, but it's, uh, it'll, it'll work just fine if we can get it dropped down enough and take the starter off. And when you take starter off, always take your battery cable off. That way you don't hit it against anything and, and have any kind of uh, fire start or anything like that. I've done that before. But we'll just, uh, we're gonna drop this uh, torque converter dust cover and try to get it over enough where we can get to the three torque converter bolts in there. And uh, after that, if we get torque converter bolts out without having to take that all the way down, having to take the exhaust out, we'll be in good shape. Uh, we got four 15 millimeter bolt heads on the dust cover and these brackets that go from the engine block to the dust cover, we'll take those off. They might have a little bit of tension on those. We'll just, uh, we'll see what happens if you see it. You might come up from behind and get a more shoulder. If you need a light. Mm -hmm. See how that jerked off there? You just be easy with that one didn't. They will. Slide back a little bit and get them out of your way. Just watch your head on them. And we got the four up here. Yeah, these are easier to get to if you have a universal socket with a swivel. If you don't, you can use a you can use a regular socket. Just not really difficult. And I think we're gonna have to be just fine on getting this out without taking the exhaust out. Look up in here and show you. Now there's a, uh, it's not a big spot there. But let's see if I can move it. The flex plate. Yeah. I'm gonna get that flex plate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take my starter loose, and that'll give me a whole lot more room right here, and I can probably get my my impact up there without having to get my my air ratchet. 
I like my air impact a whole lot better. The uh, starter bolts on these will be a 9 16 You got two of them. Just take them loose. One of them you're going to have to move the kind of pry the line over just a little bit. And get right up on there, maybe. starter bolts here. They're long, they're a little different than anything else so you don't, shouldn't get them confused. I will take my starter, you see up in there? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna let it, let it, let it lay over here at the side. You might have to push it out a certain way to get it where you can get your other tools up in there. But if you look, you can see the, see the big hole up there a lot better. All right, so this thing I might push that bolt up just a, just a hair more. See, I might be able to get my impact up there. I hope so, because it's a whole lot easier to do it with impact. Yeah. I have to bend them lines. I don't want to do that. So I will get my pair of ratchets. Get up in there. You can also use a, uh, a a regular ratchet if you don't have an air ratchet. If you don't have air at your, where you're taking these out at, uh, you do that. You just might have to hold the flex plate from moving, and you can get them. Well, there's one down. Don't lose these. Set these up here like everything else done together. You get your one out. If they get flex plate, I've seen people put uh, <coughs> put a socket and a ratchet on the crank and turn these, but uh, it's just as easy to use a long screwdriver or a uh, pry bar and just push on the flex plate. I'd much rather do that than crawl back and forth up in the front. And we'll go ahead and take this second one out. Well, got one more. That's a Chevrolet half tons. I only have three torque and bolts. Some people might think it's not as good because the Dodge and the Fords have uh, four, but I've never seen one break or have three bolts break off. If three ain't gonna hold it, four's not gonna hold it. All right, that's the last one. We got it out. Now, just just for fun, I'll probably go ahead and reach up in here and pull that torque motor back off the flex plate and just push it on up in the transmission. It'll go up in there just a hair more. Let's make sure it's out of the, the grooves up there and everything's good. All right. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and bring my jack in. I need to take this shield off over here. It's going to get in the way. It's a pain to get off sometimes, but we'll go ahead and pull it off. It's two 10 millimeter bolts. Sometimes they have the 13 millimeter bolts just like the uh, just like the pan bolts. But this one here, it's got the 10 millimeter bolt heads. They're pretty much the same bolt headed or bolts that go in the forward transmission there's a smaller one. If I can get both of them some more part. You got false one here. Don't leave your wrenches in there. It's in that fork. It's hard to find them when they when they go. Alright. I got a different kind of wrench. It's got a little more of a bend to it when reaching this. It's in a kind of in a Receded position up in there. Is that a word? I'm not sure. Sounds good anyway. Don't it? There's one. Got it. I'm gonna set it up here. When I get this out, I'm gonna put it, put it back in its holes and lay it over here on the side, just like everything else. You can't get a impact up in there or a air ratchet. It's a tight squeeze right here in between the uh, this catalytic converter and the shield here. That's why the heat shield's there. To, we got some wires plugged in back here, right behind this, and that's where your lines go in. So it's kind of protecting that. And get this bolt loose enough to get it out. It's not a good spot. There we go. We got it loose enough. I can get my fingers now. There we go. There. Feet shield out. Put the bolt back in there and lay it down. 
All right, up here you have a, you see your wiring harness, you can see it. You squeeze on both sides, pick up on that and it unplugs. Just like that, don't try to pry it up off there without squeezing this side here, both sides, and that, that, that releases it and you pick it up off there. Uh, we'll go over the lines, get the lines off here in a minute. I've seen a lot of people take the whole line fitting off. You don't have to on these. They have a clip. You take the clip off and it slide out. We'll go over it here in just a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my jack under here and I'm going to take this uh, crossman route and my rear drive shaft. I know you might say I'm using all these good tools and everything, but you can do this at home. Just uh, make sure you do it safe and use the right right kind of jack and secure everything where something will fall off the jack on you. And if you if you do, if you jack your car up and are underneath it, make sure that you have it secured. Uh, that's real dangerous. I've seen people get hurt real bad or killed from doing those, doing working on cars and not having them secured. So let's uh, make sure we do it safe. Go ahead and get this jack jacked up. I'm gonna move this back stand here. And I'll start getting my, well, I'll go ahead and get my back, my rear drive shaft out. All right, take my rear drive shaft out. Or I guess rear stand out, then I'll take the drive shaft out. Now bear with me, I got a light set up up here. I'm gonna make sure, try to make sure it don't fall if it falls, and we'll just do it without the light. I'm gonna take this rear drive shaft out, or turn around. This is gonna be a 716. Some of them you can get to with a socket and a rack or a impact. I'm not sure this in here might have, but I'll just go ahead and show you so I can show you I can do it the hard way too. Get you a pry bar or screwdriver and hold it still from moving. You get them loose, they'll, you get them out your fingers after that, it'll be a lot quicker than running a wrench all the way out there. Well, if you have any questions or anything, just leave me a comment and ask me a question. That's fine. I'll try to answer anything I can. If not, I'll figure it out and I'll let you know. We got this. No, there it is. What's that? Oh. <laughs> This is my first video ever. I don't plan on doing a whole lot more. I have uh, been blessed with the ability to work on cars. Learned it since I was little from my father. And uh, I feel like if you uh, if you have a blessing, you can you can help somebody else with it. Maybe you're a blessing somebody else. Maybe this will help you out, save you some money one day. If anybody's looking, they might need to. Might need a way to do something, they don't have the money to do it. Maybe it saves you some money to pull the transmission out or something like that. Uh, I, I mean, I, I know it might hurt my business a little bit, but anyway, that, sometimes they season their good. It just takes a, little, takes a little pressure to get it out. And on this, make sure you have a bucket or something to catch the fluid, because if I pull this out of the back of the transfer case, there could be some fluid up there in the edge. It might leak out a little bit. This in here does not look like it has any up there. We're actually going to. When we get this back put back together, I'm going to check the fluid in the trapper case. Because usually I've lost more fluid than what I have so far. I'm going to go ahead and let this down. Let this down with the transfer case rest on this torsion uh, bar across the rear. And I can get a better grip on my, my bolts up here on my transfer case. These here, I believe, are 9 sixteenths. They change them. No, those are 15. All right, I have a ratchet wrench, a small one, and I have a regular wrench. I'm gonna go ahead and break these loose with this uh, this regular wrench. Make sure they're loose so I can use them once hurt them. Well, never mind, we need to, first thing, you come over here, I'll show you this shifter, Jesse. Uh, the shifter, this is the, the manual shifter. Sometimes, a lot of them have the uh, push button, this one doesn't. So we'll pop that shifter right out of there. You have a couple plug-ins on this one. Got one plug-in up here, it's got a clip on it. You pull that clip over and it'll open up. This back here has a clip on each side. 
that one of them broke off already so we have that one off all right that's it on that except for the vacuum hose up here and just it's got a it's got a clip on it but it usually just slide right off anyway so let's get you a little screwdriver or something and that's everything off the transfer case so when i get the bolts out of the transfer case i won't have nothing hanging up because i've done that before where you take uh you take transfer case off and you forgot to unplug something and then you're there with your hands full trying to trying to get that transfer case down you you ain't got another hand to loosen it up all right get all these loose just a little bit that way i can use my uh, ratchet wrench uh, might, well maybe we're loosen that's too tight and it'll probably come out a little bit easier all right that's most of them there's uh three of them actually there's two of them i think i get three of them with my with my air ratchet there's uh two of them you can't get with air ratchet This one here is coming out. Just about. They're a little slippery. They got something been leaking all over. I'd say transmission's been leaking the pan gasket. All right. This torsion bar is a great place to put your transfer case bolts. I don't know why, but that's how I've always done it. My dad always done it like it, and that's the way I've always done it. We can do that. You can lay them on the floor, whatever. Just keep all your bolts together. You know where all your bolts are going. They're they're about the same as the uh, uh, bell housing bolts. Uh, a little bit different about having both of these. I think they have. Yeah, they have the uh, studs sticking out of them. Most of them, I don't know if all of them do. If you uh, drop a bolt, pick it up, and put it where it goes with the other ones. That way, you don't uh, you don't lose them. I got my air ratchet with my 15 universal socket. And I'm saying I'm going to do it like this. If you don't have an air ratchet, you can do it with a get your ratchet wrench, or you can get a regular wrench. It might take just a little bit longer, but it's uh, it's doable. I don't expect everybody to be super fast at this. I've done several of these all my life, so I'm I'm not saying I'm any better than anybody. I've just done it more. So. There's a third one. One more over here. Now on these, this certain year model, I know after about 2000 or 99, 2000, they get a little harder to get up in there too. But on this year model, I can reach up here with my air ratchet and get the top one sometime. Most of the time on the top one, on the newer ones, anything go 2000 or later, you have to go ahead and use your ratchet wrench to get up there. This one, you can't, you can get up there with the air ratchet. <laughs> Got that now. All right, got one more left. Now, uh, there should be some fluid right here coming from the transmission that stops right here. So when we take this last bolt out, make sure uh, <coughs> make sure you have something to catch the fluid and not make a mess. Leave that bolt there. All right, that's the last bolt. I'm gonna do I'm gonna jack this up a little bit. Give me room to bring my transfer case out. Now, uh, look like it's on there. Sometimes you'll have them stuck on there. They uh, enough silicone or something they've stuck or they seized up on there. Just kind of work them up and down. Look, make sure you don't pull it all the way out. Give it time to drain just a hair. You see all that fluid draining from the transmission. Let me pull this out and I'll show you the seal I was talking about that goes bad. You have to twist that and bring it out. If you can come in here, Jesse, I'll show them This seal right here, let me get a light on. It's bad about getting dry and breaking. And you'll, if it is, you'll see a crack right in this area, right in here. Uh, I'm gonna change that anyway, just because if it ain't broke yet, it's going to. If it ain't went bad yet, it, it will. They, they're bad about it. So set your uh, transfer case somewhere. You want to set it up like this. You lay it down, it's probably going to leak fluid. So if you have some more, you can just lean it up too without, without falling. There's a good spot, it might fall over later, but right now it's sitting up right. So, uh, all we really have left is our, uh, I'm going to push it, set it somewhere where it ain't going to bind up your dust shield. 
All right, so all we really have left is the bell housing bolts. This, uh, this bracket here, holding the wiring harness up. And this here, I'm gonna show you this here, how to do this here in just a few minutes. We'll go right, I'm going to get this uh, eight millimeter bolt out, holding the bracket, or the wiring up. That light's doing real good up there, you can see it, can you see it good on there? This here bolt, just don't, don't get to take those out because they will leave them on there and start bringing transmission down. It's gonna rip your wiring and tear your wiring. It could uh, break a wire. And then you get your transmission back in there and wonder why it's, something's not working. And uh, that'll be hard to trace down as a broken wire. That's, that's, nobody wants to have to look for one of those. So we got that. It's a little short, little bitty bolt. Got that loose. Now these here on this 97 year model, 97, 98, 96, there's a whole lot more wires coming down from everywhere on these than like on the 2000s. There, uh, there's just a whole lot more wires coming down from different directions. And on the 2000s, they all pretty much come down the same spot, but these here, you just gotta watch. Make sure you get all your brackets. There's gonna be some brackets up here when we go over. Uh, let me go ahead and get my, I'm gonna get my half inch drive impact. And this is just the way I do it. You might have a different way or a better way. I have a, uh, Three foot extension here, what about three foot? And it goes from half inch drive down to a three eighths. And I believe these are still nine sixteenths. And they are, the bell housing bolts will be nine sixteenths on these. Uh, they didn't really change the 15 mil there until about 2000. So I got my long extension, that way I can reach all the way up in there. See, there's one right here. That's the first one I'm going to take out. Lay it right where you need it. Where you don't get it. Now this one here is a little tricky. Because of the, because of where the uh, body comes down right there. And it's going to be a little tricky either way. So I'm going to do, I might have to, I have a universal. No, I don't. Well, I have one somewhere. It's probably on somebody else's table up there. I'm going to get this up in there and I'll get it out. One way or another. Might have pull down on it. Those engine mounts are while it's holding it up right now. And no. So I've heard that happen on the video. We'll get something. I'll go over to this side and I'll go ahead and get these out and I'll get that nut out now. Hey, I'm getting the. Uh, I just took the one out that uh, is holding the dipstick in, and it kind of hung up in there. So you gotta, gotta reach up in there and get it, get it out. That way you don't hang when you're trying to get down. I might have to, I might have to reach up in there, or I could just. You know, this one's been out before because uh, there's a bracket over here on the side that holds wires in, and it's got a shield and it kind of goes around these wires and holds them in the spot. And usually if, uh, if they've been out, they will have a nut on there. But if I take them out or anybody else takes them out, what they'll do, they'll leave the nut off and just run the bolt through it. And that keeps, uh, keeps from having extra nuts and everything up there. It's a lot easier to go back in with and come out with the next time. Got that one. Well, it stayed in there too, but we'll get it out in a second. And there's one more right up there. All right. Got all three of them out on this side. We got two more on the other side. We'll get them in just a second. Let me try to get rid of that one fail on there. They're kind of kind of hard to reach up in there and get them. Not one fail out. You look, they have a they have a bolt and they have a stud sticking out the end of them. On a lot of the a lot of them, they'll have a, they got like three different brackets up here that that they uh, put the the bracket on and then put a nut on top of her, but. It's a lot easier just to use the bolt to go in the bracket. That's what, the, what we usually do after this. Less, less uh, problem there and it'll hold it just fine. All right, always use a safe thing to stand on, not a bucket or anything like that. But I've got that one out of the, out of the dipstick tube, the strap hold it on. And so I'm putting all my bolts together. I got two more up here. This one's hard to see. It's the top one on the uh, driver's side of it. Kind of push these wires, and that actually has the nut on it. 
So I'm gonna get my state, it'll be a 13 millimeter head on that nut. I'll run it up in there and get it. Alright, got the nut off, it's stayed up in there too. I'm gonna reach up in here and get it out. That's the nut. It has play it with it. I might put it back in there and see what it looks like. And it to they got a lot of like three or four different brackets going in right here on this one. And you have to sometimes they're hard to get off. Alright. See the problem is you get them off and you and they try to go back to right where they were or were. <clears throat> All right, so I got all the brackets off, and there's a, then I get the bolt off next. I'm throwing my 916, so I laid it down there. I always try to keep up your tools. I always like to say a clean tool is a happy tool. All right, I got that one loose, and it stayed up in there, too, so we'll reach it and grab it. Always get them out. That way they're not hanging up while you're coming down with it. They might still be uh, still be a little threaded in there just a hair. That's the last one here. Is, if you can look, bring up here. You see this body, where the body comes together here, it's it's blocking it. These hairs are usually not bad about that, but we got this one over here. On the S10s and stuff like that, they're used, this is usually the hardest bolt to get out because the body actually comes down and is right here on it. These here usually aren't that bad, but we'll get it out. I went and got me a, a universal extension, so it should get up in there a little bit better, maybe. You know what? It ain't. So you know what we'll do? We can get it loose with a wrench. Get you a wrench, get up on here on it. You got plenty of room over here on the side, and just take it loose. It ain't, it ain't gonna cause much more problems. Always make sure your jack is up under it so that when it does come off you don't have no pressure on it and you give out it don't fall or anything on you. We get back on there. Make it easy. You know what I think I can get my, my old small rack wrench in there. I have a longer rack wrench but I don't want to walk all the way over to a while to get it. There we go. It will be a little tight coming off first. And it is. There we go. Now, you got to blow it loose, you're going to slide right out now. Use my ratchet wrench and we don't have to fry on anything or bend anything. We'll just get it right out. Got it loose enough, I can just pull it out my fingers now. If you don't care, just like and share this video or whatever you want to do on Facebook or whatever you got. It's all right. Maybe it'll be a help somebody that needs help. All right, we have all the, uh, all the bellhouse bolts are out. The only thing I like, I'm going to break it loose from the engine block. But first, I'm going to take these, uh, these here out. I've seen a lot of these come in here broke. People bring a transmission out, they pulled out their self. And uh, this Prindle switch here, that tells you that tells your truck what gear you're in. And uh, if that ain't working right, it's not gonna work right. Your uh, dash won't be uh, illuminated right. It might say uh, third gear when it's in drive or it might say neutral when it's in drive. Uh, that happens because uh, people try to get these out and they don't know how to get them out. And uh, let me, uh, I'm gonna run in here. I forgot to bring it in, but I'm gonna go here and get it. Okay, uh, somebody stole my heat gun and it's gone. It's pretty much a souped up hair dryer. Uh, I'm gonna use this. Uh, it's not ideal, but all I have to do, these here have glue. There's glue in both of these. They, I had it on. There's glue in this one and glue in that one, all right? And that's what holds them in there. That's why people can't get these out. So if you heat them up to where the glue is uh, uh, less uh, <coughs> hard, less adhesive, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it will, they will come out, all right? So I'm gonna use this. I've done it before, I used to do it like this. I don't like to do it like this, but today that's what we're gonna have to do because somebody ran off with a heat gun. So don't burn anything down. Just uh, kinda just get it warm, don't burn it up. Get you a towel because it's probably gonna be warm. And we'll try to, we'll try to get that out. 
You don't have to wig them with my hair. Just don't try to rip the... All right, there's that one now, if you look. You see the glue on it. This here actually works a little quicker than the heat gun. I do not like this. I don't recommend this either. I am a firefighter though, so it makes it safer. I'm gonna turn this off. I got the dirt on there and got on it. You hear that glue popping, and it is hot. When it's still stick, you just kind of wiggle it back and forth, it'll come out. There we go. All right, got those out so we can leave that on. Sometimes you can just take the take the uh, nut off for the shifter, and take the two 13 millimeter bolts out. These will be hard to get to with these in here, but you can get it out with a wrench and you can slide this off. Just make sure you kind of clean this, uh, the shaft up for the, uh, for the shifter because where this, this nut is put on there, it kind of, kind of mushrooms that out. And when you bring this off, it slides off. It only goes on a certain way. And when it slides off, it'll mess it up a little bit. So if you take it off, take the whole parental switch off while you're taking transmission out, make sure you clean that shaft up because it, uh, it'll be hard to get back on there and it'll mess up the, the parental switch itself. Let me see. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's see if uh, you can come over and see these lines on this side over here. Might be if you come back here and just hold it up. All right, you see the lines? They have a little plastic, uh, little plastic uh, cover on them, and we'll just pop that off. Look at that. You can see it. That's the other one here. You got two lines going to your cooler. Those are your cooler lines. All right, I got that cover off. And if you have one, this is a whole lot easier than trying to take those up. Stand them over. This is a just a 90 degree pick. You can pick them up cheap. This here's a snap on one, but one from Sears or well, they ain't no Sears anymore, many. But one from Lowe's, whatever, cold auto work. This clip is the shape of an E. And if you can find the end of it or get in on the side of it, you can pull it right out. And when you get it out, then your line will pop out. Here is the clip. Now all you gotta do is take that off. You don't have to, you don't have to unscrew those uh, line fittings and all that. That one dropped and it's all right to get new ones in the kit. And you kinda wanna wiggle your lines just a little bit and they'll pop out. That one there, but they will have a little fluid in there, so watch out for your fluid leaking. And you got have to get the bottom one. I'm gonna get the top one. Top one come out too. They both come out. All right. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna break that loose from the engine block. And uh, they uh, sometimes they they hang on pretty good to the engine block. So you got to find a good prying spot if you can. Right here, I'm behind the torque converter and. In between torque burden flex plate and it's broke loose. It come off. You see it? You got it off. You got two dowel pins on the engine block, one on each side. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reach this uh, long uh, pry bar. I'm gonna get on the strap that holds the uh, dipstick tube in place. And I'm just gonna tap it up and get that dipstick up out of the transmission. Or get the dipstick tube up out of the transmission. This way, that's not hanging and holding, holding up. Now with this here, you might wanna finagle it some way, get, it, get the dust shield out of the way just a little bit. Right there will be good. And now I'm just gonna bring my transmission back. Push that dipstick tube up a little bit. Bring it back. Might have to... Yeah, up just a hair. I can tilt mine if you can tilt yours. You might, might have to tilt it. I'm gonna pry bar here, just kind of push it, and then let down on the jack just a hair. Got it hanging. There we go. There we go. All right, make sure you don't hang on your lines uh, on wires. Watch your wires coming down. You don't want to break a wire. 
This is clear now. I'm gonna bring it down. Watch all your wires. Go down slow and steady and control. Bring it down. You're not hanging on any wires. All the wires are cleared. I got one little vacuum hose up here. It's just a vent tube is all it is. And uh, transmission is out. So, uh, all right, I'm gonna make it, uh, another video. We're gonna tear this one down here in just a minute. But uh, I've got it out now, so I hope that helped you. And there's some, there's some tricks and stuff we can go over on putting it back in, and we'll go over that when I put it back in. We'll make a video for that. But right now, I'm, uh, I'm done with this one, so we got it out. Hmm? Oh, I think it's done. Hmm. Oh, uh, if, if I helped you out any or you think I can help somebody out, just like and subscribe. And uh, we'll keep them coming. Uh, again, this is uh, LT's Transmission How-Tos. Any questions or anything, message on there. Uh, email me. I think my email's on there. Just go ahead and, uh, if you don't care, hit that subscribe button and like the, like the video. And uh, there will be more to come. And we can do different vehicles, uh, whatever you got coming into the shop, and have time to make a video of. That's what we'll do. And uh, we'll go ahead and tear it down, and I'll show you the problem on this transmission. We'll make another video for that. Thank you.